Hi and welcome to another tutorial on game design and coding with WolfJS. Uh, in this tutorial we'll finish off the first game um, which is the Catch the Monster 2D game and um, basically where we're up to is we've created a backdrop, um, created the player and enemy, score and time variables and we've added all of the text on screen. Um, we've hidden the game over and play again messages at the beginning of the game and we've also added a timer which counts down from 20 to 0 and forever in the game we check which keys are being pressed, which arrows uh, pressed and move the player in the um, direction according to what they've pressed. Um, we check if the player is touching the enemy and if so we increase the score by one, update the score on the screen and respawn the enemy in a random position and then what we also do is check if the time reaches zero, um, then we hide the player and the enemy and display the game over messages. Um, so now what we can do is, once this game has ended, we need to allow the, um, the user to restart the game. So inside this forever loop, we'll add some more space. And what we can do is check if keys being pressed, so if keys down includes, and in this case, we've said um, press P to play again. So we can check if the key that they're pressing is the letter P on the keyboard. If, they, if, the, if the user presses that at any point during the game, um, we'll set the score back to zero. We'll set the time back to 20. We'll show the player because if the game's ended, the player would have uh, been hidden. Um, it was set to hide. So we'll set that back to show. And same with the enemy, make the enemy show again. Uh, we'll also um, update the score text to display the um, score, which has changed back to zero. And same with the timer text, we'll update that to say time remaining um, with the time that's been set back to 20. And we'll get rid of the game over message and the play again message. Oops. Okay, so once the game uh, once the game restarts, we don't need to say game over or play again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, now, when uh, I move around this game, you'll notice that I can move off the world or outside the world or outside the boundary of the game and I can get stuck out there if I go too far. So um, what I need to do is basically check if I'm touching the edge of the screen, uh, make it so that I can't go any further than that, okay? But before we do that, we'll just check if I press P again, will the game restart? Oops, no, I get an error. Click on the error message. It says timer text is not defined. Okay, and that's because I accidentally um, put in a lowercase t instead of an uppercase t. So if we go back up the top, or near the top, where we created the timer text, you note that I've put in an uppercase t for text. Wherever I refer to the timer text, I need to do that again, so uppercase t. And that will fix that error message. Um, so now, when the game, when I press p um, to restart the game, it should do that without any issues. But just make sure um, whenever you create a variable, um, give it a unique name, and whenever you refer to that again, you need to spell it exactly the same way, and it is case sensitive as well. All right, I'll press P, and there we go, the game restarts. So now in the forever loop, we can add some more code to check um, if the player is touching any of the four edges of the screen, and if so, make it so they can't go any further. To do that, we can use the uh, min x, max x, min y, and max y values to check if the player is in any of those positions. So we can say if, so if this is still inside the forever loop, condition for the first if statement will be if the player, if the player's x position is greater than max x, so the very far right edge of the screen, if the player is touching the maximum or going past the maximum x position, then what we'll do is we'll set player.x position to be equal to max x. So in other words, if the player tries to go all the way over to the right, 
they can't go any further because if they go beyond the x position, uh, sorry, beyond the maximum x position, it's just going to set them back to the maximum x position. So unless they move away from that right edge of the screen, um, they'll be stuck there. They won't be able to go past that. Okay, so we can pretty much do exactly the same thing for the left edge. So we say if player dot x, but this time we say is less than min x. So if we're on the very left side of the screen, we won't be able to go past there either. So say player dot x equals min x. Okay, so now we can't go past the left edge. Same for the top and the bottom. So if player dot y is greater than max y, then player dot y equals max y. And lastly, if player dot y is less than min y, at the bottom edge of the screen, then make player dot y equal to min y. Okay, so now I can move around, but I can't go past those edges of the screen. I can collect these monsters, run into them, collect points until the timer reaches zero. When the timer reaches zero, the game ends and score is eight, time remaining zero. But if I press P, play again, score resets to zero and time resets to 20. And that is the very first game uh, written in uh, JavaScript style code using Wolf.js. So um, that's it. If you've uh, followed along and you typed in this code, the game should be working. Um, and basically you've learned how to code in JavaScript. Um, most of this code here follows the rules or syntax of the JavaScript language. Some of these functions are um, part of the Wolf.js platform or library. So you can't use, for example, set backdrop URL, um, or you can't use, for example, forever or every one second. You can't necessarily use those blocks of code in another JavaScript program. If you're making just a JavaScript application for a website, um, you'd have to say, you'd have to program those functions and say exactly what they're meant to do. Um, but those functions are built into the, the Wolf.js um, library. So um, it makes it a lot easier to code for game design. However, everything else, even though some things you won't be able to use in other JavaScript programs, everything else follows the JavaScript syntax. So to create variables, you say var and you give them a name and use the assignment operator. And to use things like if statements, it's exactly the same. You say if and you specify a condition in brackets. And then in curly brackets, you specify the action that will run or the code that will run if the condition evaluates to true. Um, so lots of this code is very much the same or similar to what you'd use uh, if you're creating another JavaScript application, for example, in a website. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to make another game. We'll make an Apple Catcher game and we'll look at a few new functions, um, how to um, make things fall um, from the top of the screen. So how to make things move in constantly in a certain direction on their own, um, how to um, get the position of the mouse on the screen and make something follow the mouse around and how to detect mouse clicks on the screen as well. Um, and also how to work with high scores and record high scores. That's it for this tutorial though. Thanks for watching and make sure you save your game.